Welcome to a new video presented to you by APC Mastery Path. APC Mastery Path provides videos related to how to implement the latest artificial intelligence and machine learning within our beloved construction industry. This video belongs to a series of videos that will tackle how to use open source LLMs to build a tool to convert PDFs to a functioning and useful podcast. The system that will be presented in this series relies on four main pillars. Pillar 1, PDFs loading and pre-processing. Pillar 2, writing transcript. Pillar 3, refining the created transcript. Pillar 4, text-to-speech workflow. In the first video, we discussed a part of the first pillar. We showcased how to set up the coding environment, load the PDFs, extract raw text and save that raw text in a file. The output file of this video was a raw text which is uncleansed and contains a lot of white spaces alongside irrelevant text information, page numbers and the likes. In the second video, we discussed the outstanding part of the first pillar. We used Llama 3.18 billion parameter large language model to make sense of the extracted raw text and reword it to make more sense in preparation for the next steps. The output from this video was a much more cleansed text file which was done by the uploaded LLM of choice. It made its best to remove the white spaces and unnecessary text. This file is now more in shape and ready for the next step. In the third video, we discussed the second pillar. We used the cleanse text which was the output of the previous step to be the backbone of writing the first iteration of the podcast script. In the fourth video, we discussed the third pillar. We introduced some refinements to the first iteration of the transcript created in the previous step. In this video, we are going to discuss the fourth and final pillar. We will showcase how we could convert the refined transcript into a podcast with speakers tackling a certain topic through using advanced text-to-speech models. Having understood how we are going to tackle this project, let's dive in. This project was crafted by the Meta team and they have provided the full code on one of the their GitHub repositories that I will be putting the link for in the video description below. I have also created my own refined code and uploaded it to a separate GitHub repository which I am going to be providing the link for in the video description below as well. This will make the process of following through and implementing the project much easier for the listeners. Step 1. Setting up the environment for machine learning. As always, this the most important step is to make sure that we have all the dependencies and libraries installed and in place. We have discussed in the first video of this series how to create a virtual environment and how to install the required libraries and dependencies. We are going to import some of the installed libraries for our text-to-speech flow in this video. Step 2. Generating synthetic speech with Parler text-to-speech and Bark using custom text and voice descriptions. Step 2.1. Parler model. The first model that we are going to use is the Parler model. We will generate a short segment with speaker Laura's voice. Accordingly, we need to demonstrate how to generate synthetic audio using a text-to-speech TTS model from the Parler TTS library. It involves loading the text-to-speech model, providing a text input along with a description of the voice style and generating audio output. In this code block, we are trying to do the following. Setup device determines whether to use a GPU, CUDA, if available, or the CPU if not. Load model and tokenizer loads a pre-trained TTS model, Parler TTS for conditional generation, and a tokenizer compatible with it. These tools convert text into tokens the model can process to generate speech. Define text and description specifies the content to be spoken and describes the voice style. Tokenize inputs converts the text and voice description into token IDs that the model can understand. Generate audio passes the tokenized text and description to the model, which produces synthetic audio. Play audio plays the generated audio output in the notebook. The final output is an audio array that contains synthesized speech based on the given text, presented with the specified voice characteristics. The audio is then played back, allowing users to hear the model's vocal interpretation of the input text. So let's listen to the generated sample audio. Exactly, and the distillation part is where you take a lesion model and compress it down into a smaller, more efficient model that can run on devices with limited resources. Step 2.2. Bark model. The code used in this step uses the Bark model, a text-to-speech synthesis model, to generate a nuanced audio output based on a custom text prompt. The code includes 1. Setting up a specific voice preset and sampling rate. 2. Loading the required processor and model, both of which are configured for efficient GPU use. 
3. Processing the input text prompt to fit the selected voice characteristics. 4. Customizing the generation process by setting temperatures for expressive, natural sounding speech synthesis. The generated output is an audio file containing the synthetic voice that recites the provided text prompt. The voice has been customized with temperature settings that enhance expressiveness and a specific voice preset to shape the vocal quality. Here, there are some important notes to consider. We will set the voice underscore preset to our favorite speaker. This time, we can include expression prompts inside our generation prompt. Note you can capitalize words to make the model emphasize on these. You can add hyphens to make the model pause on certain words. Having understood this step and the different techniques that we can use to tweak the generated audio, let's listen to the generated audio. And the distillation part is where uh, you take a LARH model and like compress it down into a smaller, more efficient model. It can run on devices with limited resources. Step three, bringing it together, making the podcast. Having explored in the previous step two text-to-speech models, it is now time to see how these models can perform using the resultant .pkl file from the previous video. We need to load the .pkl file, typically containing text data, and prepare two TTS, text-to-speech, models, bark and parlor TTS, for subsequent audio generation tasks. It allows users to select the .pkl file through a file dialog, handles errors if no file is selected, and sets up the required models for generating audio from text data. Step for functions for audio generation for speakers using Parler and Bark text-to-speech models. Step for point one, function for generating audio for speaker one using Parler TTS. In this step, we will define a function, generate underscore speaker one underscore audio, which leverages the Parler TTS model to generate audio based on input text for a specific speaker profile. This function uses predefined characteristics from speaker one underscore description to produce audio that matches the intended tone and style for speaker one. The function returns an audio array and the sampling rate, which can be used to play or further process the generated audio for speaker one. This audio output will be shaped according to the expressive, dramatic characteristics defined in the speaker one underscore description. Step for point two, function for generating audio for speaker two using Bark model. Following the thought process from above, we will define another function, generate underscore speaker 2 underscore audio, which uses the Bark model to synthesize audio for speaker 2 based on the input text. The function applies a specific voice preset and temperature settings, creating a distinct, expressive audio output tailored to speaker 2's vocal style. The function outputs an audio array and sampling rate, which can be played or processed further. This array contains the synthesized voice, customized to match the characteristics of the selected voice preset for speaker 2. Step 5, converting NumPy array to audio segment for playback and export. Once we have created the audio array in a NumPy Y format, we need to create a utility function, NumPy underscore to underscore audio underscore segment, which converts a NumPy Y array containing audio data into an audio segment object. The audio segment format from the PyDub library allows easy manipulation and export of audio files in various formats. The function processes the audio data by converting it to a 16-bit PCM format and then creating a WAV file in memory. The strength of the created function lies in the fact that it can return an audio segment object that can be directly played back, exported to various file formats, or further processed. This allows for flexible handling of generated audio data in formats compatible with many media applications. Step 6. Safely converting text data to Python objects using as.literal underscore evil. Reaching that point, we will need to use Python's abstract syntax trees AST module to convert the podcast underscore text, a string representation of a Python data structure, into an actual Python object. The as.literal underscore evil function is used to evaluate this string safely, avoiding potential security risks associated with evil. This is particularly useful when loading serialized data in string format that represents dictionaries, lists, or other literal structures. Step 7. Generating and concatenating audio segments for podcast production. Once we have created the segmented audio array and the separate audio segments for both speakers using Parler and Bark text-to-speech models, it is now time to concatenate these audio objects into one audio track. Therefore, we are creating this code block to generate and concatenate audio segments for a podcast using two synthetic voices, speaker 1 and speaker 2. 
The code iterates through the text segments in podcast underscore text, identifies the speaker, generates audio accordingly, and then combines the segments into a single audio file. Step 8. Saving the final podcast audio as an MP3 file. The last step of this code and the whole project is to save the final underscore audio object, which contains the complete concatenated podcast audio, as an MP3 file. It first checks that final underscore audio has been created, then opens a file dialog for the user to specify the save location and file name. If the user selects a location, the audio is exported in MP3 format, otherwise, a message is displayed indicating that the save operation was cancelled. The final output of this system is as you see the MP3 audio file for the podcast which has two speakers. The two speakers have different tones, accents, emotions, and feelings. This can be sensed from their tone. Here is a snippet of the generated audio file. Welcome to The Writing Life, where we explore the world of writing and share tips and tricks to help you improve your craft. I'm your host, and today we're joined by a seasoned writer and educator who's worked with authors, poets, and journalists. Let's dive right in. What draws you to writing, and how do you approach the creative process? I think I've always been fascinated by the power of words to convey emotion and meaning, but how do you approach writing exactly? Well, I think it's all about understanding your audience and purpose. Whether you're writing a novel, essay, or a poem, it's essential to consider who your readers are and what they want to take away from your work. Um, That makes sense. But um, what about tone? How do you convey a tone through writing? I've always struggled with this one. Tone is a great topic. Think of it like music. You can convey a specific mood or atmosphere through your language and style. For example, if you're writing a humorous piece, you might use playful language and witty one-liners. Um... All the files that we are explaining in this series of video are available on my GitHub repository, provided in the video description below. Thanks a lot for watching. Hope you found this video useful and insightful. I've prepared a couple of them other videos about fine-tuning large language models and deploying them to OpenWeb UI. I'm going to be putting the links in the description below. You can also pay my website a visit at www.apcmasterypath.co.uk, where I provide multiple packages for the RSS APC candidates to support them throughout their RICS journey. Also, I provide lots of insights about the RICS APC process, the different areas of competence, and how you can deploy AI within the construction industry. Do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe so that you get notified about our latest videos.